I'm Heidi Marshall. I'm 40 years old and I have been diagnosed with invasive ductal carcinoma. I'm a single mom of a beautiful daughter, 19 years old, and I decided to recently go back to school and uh, complete my studies. I finished my degree, although in my last semester of school I noticed a lump and I was so focused on school and the future that I just didn't really pay much attention to it. So the lump was there and I kept my eye on it and didn't think much of it at first, but after three months, it was still there. So I decided to um, go, as I was going to my doctor's appointment, I decided to come forth and ask the doctor for a second opinion. Uh -huh. I asked her and said, I know that I'm, you're not my family doctor and you're here as an, for another purpose, but I think I found a lump. Would you be able to check it for me? And she most so willingly asked me to step up on the table and did an exam for me and then recommended that she felt that she had, there was a lump there as well and recommended that I go and get a mammogram. So upon receiving the diagnosis, I was conflicted on how I should share this with my family and loved ones. Um, my daughter had just decided to relocate uh, to Ottawa for personal reasons and we had moved all her things and she was ready to start her new life so I was really apprehensive on how to break this news to her. Um, sharing the news with the family was very difficult but I decided to share with my daughter first so that she would be able to be supportive and be there for me to help share and break the news with to my mom and my sister. And breaking the news was difficult, but uh, it put things into, again, motion. And with doctor's appointments coming on very quickly, um, things moved at a rapid speed. This diagnosis, it just put a big pause in my future. I was wondering where my future might be, might, might go. So I, I'm trying to stay optimistic and positive as I go through. Final diagnosis is that uh, currently I'm a stage 3A um, breast cancer, which means that it has spread to other, um, to my lymph nodes, definitely, and with the possibility of spreading to other parts of my body. Um, through our scans, we were able to detect a suspicious spot on my spine, but unfortunately with the type of testing that's available right now, they weren't 100% guaranteed that it definitely is a metastasis or it has spread, but we're going to be treating it as such. So with my journey, it started with chemotherapy right away. So meeting the oncologist for the first time going in, I was kind of not knowing what to expect and walked in and basically said, she said, we, want, we need to start chemotherapy tomorrow. So again, the little whirlwind kind of hit me and I felt out of control through this whole process. At this point, we're not sure if I do have um, cancer, breast cancer that has spread to my spine. And the only conclusive way to find that out is if we actually do a bone biopsy and I'm not willing to do that. So we're going to just treat it as it has spread. So we needed to start chemotherapy right away. Um, that was difficult as well, um, starting the chemotherapy. And I've now, today actually I just finished my third round, so I'm feeling pretty spry today, which is good. Um, first round was positive. Second round was a little bit harder, um, hit me with some nausea, some lethargy. The fatigue is phenomenal. I may look fine and I might look bright, but I am so tired inside and sometimes it's just tired just to smile. The plan is to continue for six rounds, so that will take me probably to the end of February. And in February, we're looking then at surgery. Um, initially, we were looking at a full um, mastectomy. Uh, however, with the chemo treatment, our hopes is that we may shrink the tumor down so that we may be able to save some tissue. And if that's the case, then it might just be a partial mastectomy. Um, and then after that, we're definitely going to be doing radiation. I'm just not sure exactly how long because we haven't reached that stage in the journey. So, so in all of parts and parcels of getting tested and diagnosing of uh, cancer, part of it that I was passionate about in it was important for me was to think futuristically and part of thinking futuristically involves um, genetic testing and that's something that I wanted to pursue. There's been a lot of controversy regarding genetic testing and um, perhaps what the results may or may not show or what actually comes along with the results. Throughout all the assessments and diagnostic criteria that was 
was being done um, with the MRI scans and the CAT scans and the um, ultrasounds and whatnot. Unfortunately, they weren't able, the doctors, the medical team, weren't able to make a, a diagnosis 100% that it is stage four or the um, cancer has spread to my spine. We do have suspicious spots that have been found and that ambiguous term to me has been very hard to swallow because again, I, I like to have an answer and I like to know positive or negative. Doing the chemotherapy followed by the, the sorry, mastectomy and the radiation. Uh, I'm hopeful. My doctors are hopeful. Very, um, it's, a, it's a different term, I suppose. Hopeful for what? They haven't quite said. However, um, hopeful that the disease may be s stopped. Helpful, hopeful that they might get everything. They might kill off all the cells. Let's just be positive and just, let's all just be hopeful. So let's be hopeful that it's going to turn out for the best. I've just learned to take each day as it comes and accept what it is and try to find the positive in it. And if you're feeling dark and you're feeling sad and you're feeling down, you just, you need to pause and see if you can try to reframe how you can look at that situation. Because it's, you can only control how you behave and how you react to the situation. You can't control everybody else's reactions. So, and that's what I've learned is most important right now is to focus on me. It sounds very selfish, but it's a, it's a journey, it's a process.